Hey everybody, this is Tim with the University of Vinyl, back today with a new video. Hope everyone is doing great. I had a recent commenter, um, I think he noticed uh, some books in the background. I put a post up on, um, on YouTube of something, uh, maybe it was the Eagles' um, recent one step. I uh, just got Desperado in the mail. I haven't even uh, had, chance, had a chance to listen to it yet, but uh, I digress. Where was I? Oh, I was talking about a, an intro to today's video. Uh, in addition to listening, I occasionally like to read. <laughs> and I, um, I put together a list of 10 books that I feel are well worth your time if you're so inclined. If you're a reader and you want to dig further into some of the music that I talk about and others talk about and that you most likely, hopefully, love. Um, you know, there are some cool books um, that cover different angles. So it's, it's another experience, uh, another way to kind of experience the music, and that would be to kind of learn more, go deeper behind the scenes. Of course, this stuff is all catnip for me because I love... Um, I love taking a deep dive into subjects. I have an obsessive collecting personality um, that might be familiar with some of you people who are watching. Uh, but anyway, here are 10 books that I feel are worth your time in no particular order. And I thought this would be a fun subject for a little bit of a change of pace today. If you love Steely Dan, like myself, you want to know, you want to try and get inside the brain of Walter and Donald, if that's at all possible. I have found that the complete guide to their music, Steely Dan, is a great primer. This covers every single album, every single song recorded by Steely Dan. And it goes in depth as far as what they were thinking We've got a requisite kind of photo gallery. This came out in 1998. I think it was reissued in 2004. Um, the author is a gentleman by the name of Brian Sweet, S-W-E-E-T. Um, Brian Sweet is the author of Reeling in the Years, the only Steely Dan biography in print, and is a noted Steely Dan archivist and collector. Brian Sweet, where's your channel? No, I'm just kidding. So there it is, Steely Dan, the complete guide to their music, highly recommended. I mentioned taking a deep dive on subjects or albums, and um, I do have a running series um, as part of my channel. It's called Liner Notes, and I think I've done three of those videos so far, and I just take a singular view at um, one album by a particular artist or band, a little bit about what was uh, going on in the background during the time period, and uh, just kind of delving into the history of the album itself. And along those lines, I love these 33 and a third books. I have a few of these. This is the um, Southern Accents book, um, of course, covering Tom Petty and Heartbreakers Southern Accents. And then I also have one for a workbook, the outstanding Bob Mould, 1989, his first solo album. 33 and a third, it's an entire series. Those are highly recommended. You can always read reviews of these books. They're, they're different um, authors, and sometimes they're celebrity authors. They may have a connection with an artist or an album. And um, I will say that they can be hit or miss, so check out the reviews. Um, but that is the 33 and a third series of books, highly recommended.
this book has almost an encyclopedia-like uh, take on, on music in general. Um, this is the Rock Snobs Dictionary. And that is by David Camp and Stephen Daly. Both of these writers, um, pretty well known in the music press. They've written for Rolling Stone, Vanity Fair, uh, I think New York Magazine as well. They have a very humorous take on, on individuals in music history, as well as instruments, um, methods of recording. Uh, it, it's a fantastic and very, very breezy read. You know, if you can see this as an example, they have a little blurb on Brian Eno. Let me just read you a couple first sentences of this, uh, of this description. Brian Eno, egghead producer, an electronics whiz with appropriately futuristic name and aerodynamic pate. <laughs> Eno started out as a keyboard player for Roxy Music and went on to make his name as a producer, Talking Heads Devo U2, and pioneer of ambient music, the soundtrack for everything from aromatherapy to recreational drug use to booting up Windows 95. Eno enjoys his greatest rock stop hit. Eno enjoys his greatest rock snob status, however, for his 70 solo albums, Another Green World, Here Come the Warm Jets, Taking Tiger Mountain by Strategy, and Before and After Science. So that's just a quick blurb out of the book. It's a great read. Uh, it's a reference book that I actually will use occasional, occasionally. David Camp and Stephen Daly, The Rock Snobs Dictionary. I don't have a ton of, of biographies by different artists in, in my kind of hit list. Um, but I do like kind of out of left field, um, almost like uh, journals and things of that nature. And one of those that falls into that category, of course, is Donald Fagan's Eminent Hipsters. This is a very, very quick read. This was issued in 2013. There are wide uh, passages in the book where Fagan is kind of describes his, his day when he was on tour. Uh, he wrote a bunch of the stuff when he was on tour uh, during that uh, Dukes of September tour that he did. Um, I actually caught that, that, uh, that tour at Red Rocks. It was fantastic, by the way. The Dukes of September was Donald Fagan, Boz Skaggs, and Michael McDonald. Fantastic evening of music. Um, but Fagan will write about, um, you know, avoiding the pool in the afternoon at a hotel in Las Vegas, um, thing, things like that. It, you've got to read it to, uh, to appreciate it. But that is Eminent Hipsters by Donald Fagan. There is the back cover. Kind of interesting. You've got kind of a current day shot of Donald in 2013. And uh, there he was, much younger, of course. Eminent Hipsters. One of my favorite alternative bands from Minneapolis was The Replacements. And several years ago now, there was a comprehensive biography of the band put out by Bob Mayer. Uh, that's M-E-H-R. It's called Trouble Boys. There is the spine of the book. And this is a fantastic read. It goes way, way, way in depth on the interpersonal relationships in the band. Of course, the brothers uh, that were involved, um, Tommy and Bob Stinson and Paul Westerberg and Chris Mars. Those were the original replacements, of course. Uh, we later on got other players um, as um, Bob Stinson left the band and Chris Mars eventually left the band as well for I think the final, the final album, final tour. Anyway, this is a fantastic read. I don't have the sleeve on it anymore, so it's just a black book, but that is uh, Trouble Boys by Bob Mayer, the true story of the replacements. Highly recommended. The next book is really kind of a love story between one of the most likable guys in rock and roll and his very famous wife. Uh, they were actually in the same band, and that band was Talking Heads. 
I'm talking about the book that came out about a year ago now, Remain in Love, Chris France. This is a fantastic read, uh, better than I thought it would be. And I have, a, I have another Talking Heads bi biography that I thought was pretty boring. Um, I think it's called This Must Be the Place, but this is a better book if you want to dig deep into the Talking Heads. Um, you know, Chris France talks about the very, very early days going all the way back in art school in Providence, Rhode Island. Um, you know, they were, um, when, when they moved to Manhattan, uh, they were basically squatting in, um, in an abandoned lofts um, in, in parts of Soho and Manhattan in the late, uh, later 1970s. And it also, you know, it, it talks a lot about his love and relationship with Tina Weymouth. Uh, fantastic book. There are some interesting insights into David Byrne as well. Also highly recommended, Remain in Love, Chris France. If you want to dig deeper into the New York scene in the 70s, there is a fantastic book called Love Goes to Buildings on Fire which of course is a lyric from the Talking Heads. And very, very cool cover. The author is Will Hermes, H-E-R-M-E-S. Uh, he has written a bunch for Rolling Stone, Vanity Fair, other places. And this is, uh, the subtitle on this book is Five Years in New York That Changed Music Forever. He takes a look at 1973 all the way up to 1978. So seminal period in New York history and music history. Um, we're, we're moving from punk to new wave and all of those bands um, during that time period from the New York Dolls to everybody who played at CBGB's, the Ramones, Blondie, Talking Heads, etc. cetera. Um, really, really good read and very, very well researched. Great book. So I'm going to move from the 1970s to the 1980s and another whole music movement, and that was the alternative movement of the 1980s, the bands that rebelled against the Reagan policies uh, of the 1980s, and that is called This Band Could Be Your Life by Michael Azerod. This is a fantastic book. I've got a paperback. I've had this thing for decades, and I will reach for it occasionally um, because it's such a great read. It's the way the book is set up. It is a series of profiles on all of those bands in the early to mid 1980s that really made a difference. Butthole Surfers, Sonic Youth, Big Black, Fugazi, Mud Honey, Beat Happening, Dinosaur Jr., Mission of Burma, The Minutemen, Black Flag. Minor Threat, The Replacements again, and of course, Husker Du. This is a fantastic read. Highly, highly recommended. Our band could be your life. Scenes from the American Indie Underground, 1981 to 1991. If you like Wilco and Uncle Tupelo, um, who better to get the, the true story and kind of the behind the scenes look than none other than Jeff Tweedy. Uh, this was his book that came out last year. Let's go so we can get back. Uh, Jeff Tweedy, that's an earlier shot of him. Um, might have been taken during the last year or two of Uncle Tupelo or the first year or two of Wilco. There is a more up-to-date photo. And Jeff Tweedy is a fantastic writer. And uh, this, is a, this is a deep dive. Um, into not only kind of the, the history of him and Jay Farrar and kind of what went down with the breakup of Uncle Tupelo. Um, it was really just, <laughs> spoiler alert, a lot, a lot of non-communication issues between Jay Farrar and, um, and Jeff Tweedy. Um, he also goes deep on a lot of the different interpersonal struggles that he has had with a couple different band members, uh, former band members in, in Wilco. Um, the whole um, kind of drama around a couple albums that happened in the very early 2000s 
And um, it's a fantastic read. Highly, highly recommend this one as well. A memoir of recording and discording with Wilco, etc. Let's go so we can get back, Jeff Tweedy. There's been a rumored follow-up to this next book for decades now. <laughs> and what I'm talking about is Bob Dylan's Chronicles, Volume 1. Uh, this came out, I believe, in 2001. Um, kind of soon after Love and Theft. And this is a fantastic book. Um, it's got a cool cover. It kind of looks like almost a cover of Modern Times, uh, the album that came out after Love and Theft. Um, this takes a look at three different distinct time periods in Bob Dylan's life and career. Um, I think there, uh, there's a passage about the recording of Oh Mercy, uh, there is also his very, very early days when he moved to New York from Dinkytown, Minneapolis. And uh, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, everybody knows about Dylan's lyrics. Um, they can be deep, they can be dense. But this is su surprisingly kind of clear and clairvoyant and a lot of insight into Dylan's thought processes. Um, he has an incredible mind as far as um, just recordings and and his appreciation for artists that go back all the way down, you know, all the way back to like Tin Pan Alley. He talks a lot about that in the book. This is a great read. Um, you won't uh, you won't be able to read it in one sitting. It it is a little bit tense going in in sometimes, but uh, surprisingly engaging. That's highly recommended. That is Bob Dylan Chronicles Volume 1. I just wanted to double check and see. I think this came out in 2001. I'm sorry, it came out in 2004. So. There you have it, everybody. Those are 10 books. One was a series of books, the 33 and a third album series um, that I'm recommending and... Um, Hope you got something out of this. If you um, have read any of those books, feel free to chime in in the comments. If you have any others that you want to recommend, feel free to chime in in the comments as well. I am really appreciating all of the feedback, all of the comments that I have been getting on the channel. It's fantastic uh, to put up a video and it kind of takes on a life of its own in the comment section. Um, there will be people, you know, replying to other folks and talking about different pressings and things and have you heard this before etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's really fun and uh, i appreciate all of you thank you very much and i uh, hope to see everybody back on my next video have a great day